it's Don here from the board. Thank you for coming along and checking out another one of our videos. Today, we're going to be having a look at something that I've knocked up and had 3D printed. So let's check out what it is. Just switching over to the desktop. Now, what I've got here, which you've probably already seen because, of course, there's the title for this video, is my own DIY diode bender. So it's a very simple design um, and I had a bit of frustration obviously in all of my previous builds in being able to bend my diodes for a PCB evenly and effectively, you know, quickly and being able to get the legs the right angle and all that kind of stuff. And of course it's always nice to be able to get your bends nice and even in the right position, in the right gap distance so it looks uniform on the board and you don't have diodes at all funny angles and things like that. So I went on a bit of a measurement spree and I measured all the different PCBs that I had with the diode through holes and it turned out that they were roughly about between 7 to 8 mils in their positioning. So I went and basically designed this. What it is, is it's a two piece diode bender. Now you can already get different diode bending devices out there but what makes this one a little bit different is that unlike the more expensive hand crank units you don't have to have your diodes on the adhesive strip which often you buy them and they come in that and a lot of the actual component benders electronic benders are typically scaled for different sizes so they actually have a flare out which starts with a small size and it gets bigger as you go along and effectively it means if you want to bend something say at seven or eight mils you can only do one at a time. So I thought, you know what, I want to do a lot at the same time because if we're building a keyboard to 60%, for example, you're going to need 70, you know, uh, switches. If you're doing a gherkin, for example, that's 30. And rather than one at a time, one at a time, it was just easier to make something that could do multiple. This particular design is just 25. And of course, you can take the same philosophy if you wanted to and design your own and make it even bigger and longer. So. We've got a bottom piece, which is this one here on the left, and then we've got a top piece on the right. They are designed to match, so you can see how it will fit and slot in. There's a bit of gap space for the actual diode body to sit in, and what I've done is I've actually made, if it'll focus, let's fight in the focus, there's channels that you can kind of really fuzzily see in this. Oh, you want to hold your stuff up to the camera too, do you? All right, well, it doesn't really want to show up very well. There we go. There's internal channels, which help guide the actual legs as they're being pushed down as well. Mm. So what I've got here is I've just got a couple of leftover diodes from uh, my hand wire build, which is always nice to have. And what I'll show is how it works and hopefully how well it will work. So you just get your diode and you're just going to pop it into one of the grooves just like that and let's just do one to start with so it's sitting in the middle we get our tool and we line it up and just gently give it a bit of a, a wiggle so that it falls in between so there it is there's a bit of space movement and then we just push down hey you can't touch that so what you'll see is now the legs are kind of sticking up already um, you don't want to push it too hard so that it actually crushes the diode body and then what you can do is you can just pull them straight and lift and there you go now it just sits in there and it's pretty evenly bent I wouldn't say that it's a hundred percent perfect as such but for something 3d printed it's pretty even on both sides and if we test it against say the gherkin it's a little bit wide because of the flaring but when I squeeze in the sides a little bit and just pop it down and give that a, a nudge all the way down you'll see it sits hopefully that'll focus on it there we go it sits really well quite flush um, almost up to that bend and as you can see the slight amount of flare does allow it to actually um, prevent it from falling out of the PCB so you can see I was holding that upside down and it's not going anywhere. So that's actually, I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. And of course, it's easy to, uh, to get out. So I'm just going to put that to the side. 
And now, of course, the actual true test is to see how well it bends a bunch of different diodes simultaneously. So let's just tip these out carefully. Make sure that blue one here doesn't try and nab any of them. So let's put uh, all of them in. Now, of course, it doesn't really matter what their orientations are, but as long as you make sure that they go across evenly and they don't end up at an angle, but I kind of designed it so it would be hard to do that. Have that fall in. So yeah, so this will take 25, as I mentioned earlier, which means, sure, you might have to do it more than once uh, to get your board, the amount of the diodes you want for your board done, but at least it'll certainly reduce the time required. So once again, get the top piece, uh, line up, because it does actually have a kind of an orientation. So I'm just going to jiggle it back and forth until they kind of get into the right spot. Hey, what are you doing? You're wiggling around. Oi. What? You want a hug? You want a hug? Okay. So there we go. All right, so they're all in now. And uh, can't really see it very well. I don't know if that'll show up very well or not, but uh, it is all in, finally. There's not a lot of movement left and right, and let's just give that a squeeze. Like that, all the legs went up. Perfect. And uh, then we can just pull them up against the, the top body, just like that. Although I mounted one of them here on the end, so I actually bent that leg a little bit, but it shouldn't have affected the actual bend of it. If I lift it up, and now, as we pull them out, look at that. They look pretty good to me, except for that one on the end that had the, uh, the slightly munted bent leg. So I think that's a, a relatively good success. I'm quite happy with how that turned out. Um, I will actually have this STL file available on Thingiverse, as well as all the other things that I've sort of 3D printed designed. Um, so if you are interested in having this and printing it yourself, Make sure that, of course, your scaling is correct so that it will fit the right dimensions. Uh-uh, not for you. You've got a switch test to play with, okay? So there we go. Nice handy little tool for anybody who's interested in bending a lot of diodes simultaneously. And now we'll put that back in and then Daddy can use these later for another build, okay? Look at you. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Are you are you sulking because Daddy wouldn't let you pick up the bent diodes? Hey, all right. Uh, well, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, thank you, of course, for checking it out and head over to Thingiverse if you've got a 3D printer or you want to get one of these 3D printed through any of the printing services or if your mate has a 3D printer and so on and so forth. Okay. Well, it's time to say goodbye. You want to say bye? Bye. No, you're going to sulk now. Oh, there we go. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, time for us to go. So, as usual, until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>